This is Mission Control Houston at 16 hours 24 minutes, mission elapsed time. Four hours 25 minutes remaining in the sleep period for the crew of Columbia. Spacecraft now on the 12th orbit over north central Africa. 29 minutes away from next station contact at Guam. We're now estimating a change of shift briefing with the off-going flight director, Chuck Lewis, at uh, 10.45 Central Time in the Building 2 small briefing room, room 135, not the main auditorium. At 16.25 Mission Elapsed Time, this is Mission Control Houston. This is Mission Control Houston. Mission elapsed time is now 16 hours, 48 minutes. Columbia is on its 12th orbit of the Earth. Astronauts Young and Crippen have slightly over four hours remaining in the sleep period. We've had a change of uh, flight control teams here in the Mission Operations Control Room in Houston. Flight Director Neil Hutchison and his silver team of flight controllers, which guided Columbia during the ascent portion of flight are now on duty. At this time, the commentary circuit will be transferred to Building 2 for a change of shift briefing with the outgoing flight director, Chuck Lewis. Mission elapsed time, 16 hours, 48 minutes, 43 seconds. This is Mission Control, Houston. Okay, uh, this is the uh, off-going bronze flight uh, director, uh, Chuck Lewis. You want to make a brief uh, rundown of what happened during this shift, and then we'll go to Q&A. Well, I believe most of you have copies of the flight plan activities today, and those were followed, followed to the letter by the crew. We did a super job of staying on the timeline, accomplishing the activities we had scheduled for them. Uh, almost three and four burns uh, went off. On schedule, we had an FCS checkout. We started one of the APUs on orbit that went off on schedule. Uh, we had an RCS hot fire test to check all of our thrusters out. Uh, that data is being analyzed now in the control center. Uh, the crew saw no problem with that on board. We were LOS when that occurred. Uh, let's see. And we got them to, to bed on time. Uh, Oh, I didn't bring a flight plan. Uh, scheduled time in the flight plan you have. 13 hours, GET. <clears throat> and uh, let's see, that's, in summary, uh, it went just as we had scheduled it. Hey, wait for the mic and identify yourself. Front row. Roger Witherspoon from the Atlanta Constitution. At the earlier press conference this morning, or rather this afternoon, um, Mr. Kranz, said that a rollover operation would probably occur during the 9th or the 21st orbit, and that pictures would be taken from Air Force ground telescopes to determine if there was a loss of shielding from the bottom of the spacecraft. There was a rollover on the 8th orbit. Were pictures taken then or at any other time? And if so, what did they show? Well, Kranz uh, would have loved to have been here, but he went home with the bed. Uh, we did not make any maneuvers today in support of a site observation. But you did have a rollover in the eighth orbit. If we, if we, if we, it should have been a scheduled maneuver. Scheduled rollover on the eighth orbit um, of the automatic system, that which was testing the automatic controls. Right. Went to uh, IMU align and then back to Z local vertical, as I recall. Yeah, but it was a complete fight. rollover, and the bottom was facing was facing Earth as it went over Hawaii. It was, well, over that region, it was 2,000 miles away, but there was a, um, a rollover that time, and it was scheduled and pre-planned. There was not one pre-planned at the ninth orbit. 
right? But there was a point in time when it was in range of Hawaii and in range of Maui and the telescopes that there was a rollover. Now, were pictures taken or weren't they? If pictures were taken, I'm not aware of the photographs. Now, I think uh, Mr. Kranz also... To my knowledge, we made we gave the crew no specific changes to their attitude maneuvers that they had we'd already planned for uh, ground observations. Now, I don't have my flight plan. I wish I had my flight plan here with me, and I'd look at the particular orbit you're talking about and uh, try to explain. <clears throat> that's that's press kit there. Well, I guess it has it. It doesn't have attitudes. Referred to Rev. Eight. Not necessarily. I would not necessarily be informed, and probably wouldn't be. Therefore, the Air Force could have taken the pictures, they, they and they well would not have had to tell you. That's correct. And as, as I think Mr. Kranz explained earlier, we have an offline team working that particular problem. He, he being the leader of that team, <coughs> and uh, the only thing I've seen is the same thing I believe you've seen on the, the earlier TV that the crew took. Uh, I saw some 8 by 10 blow-ups of uh, some of that video during the course of my, my shift. Dan Molina. Having had uh, another eight hours or so to assess the tile problem at this point, Chuck, do you uh, do you have anything to add to Neil Hutchinson's evaluation of the problem this afternoon? Does that evaluation still stand at this point as to the seriousness or non-seriousness of the problem? At this point, it still stands. <clears throat> I have, <clears throat> we advised the crew uh, late in the day uh, of uh, basically no impact as we saw it. Now, uh, again, I think uh, Mr. Kranz explained that, that there's still data being gathered being screened, and I'm really not working that problem. I had my hands full today just working the flight plan. So you're not privy, you're not privy to any conclusions I will be, the problem? I'm sure I'll be privy to conclusions once they're drawn. Uh, based <laughs> on the data we got from the crew today on the video, uh, we're not concerned. Do you have an idea of the time frame on developing any sort of conclusions from that data? That data? No, I think, no, I think the, the team that's working is going to be back in. Back in. Uh, my guess would be sometime around 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> would assume that there's being data gathered now and, and to be correlated later. Okay, up here in the front. Donna Spaggett, Dallas Morning News. From the photographs that you looked at of the tile area, could you tell exactly how many tiles were missing? <clears throat> well, it looked like there was only one complete tile missing. I forget which side it was. Most of the others <clears throat> indicated that there were a piece or a portion of a tile that may be missing, but not a complete tile. But there was one, and I forget the side, which side it was on, it looked like there was a complete tile missing. And there was another one that looked like that on a tile that had been diced, the half, one half of that might, have, might be missing. <clears throat> there was six best I could tell was six on one side and nine on the other, and that includes any minor tile damage that we could have, we picked up in the, that video. <clears throat> hey, Mike. Now, if they get more data in here that's better resolution, I'm sure they'll they'll know a little more about it. But that's that's what we have right now. Okay, we had a question back here. Uh, yeah, okay, up here in the front, Mr. Katz. Shelly Katz, Time Magazine. I'm not going to talk about tiles. So I want to talk about glue and about felt. <laughs> glue and felt. The um, <laughs> spacecraft reported seeing red in the areas that were exposed under the tiles. Red would indicate what? The skin of the craft? Sip. It's the material used to bond the tile to the vehicle. That would imply if they saw red, the, the tile insulation material was missing down to the bonding layer. Is that the bonding layer under the felt? Yes, it's so the felt the bonding is bonding layer also. that the insulation is bonded that, that bonds it to the vehicle. That's the sip or the orange. Okay, vehicle. so we're not only missing the tile, we're also missing the felt. Well, no, I think you're getting a couple of things mixed up. 
some of the insulation is called felt. It's a type, there's different types of insulations used depending on the heat the grains are trying to protect. And uh, there's the Nomex felt must be what you're referring to. But isn't that what's in that area? It's an FRSI area. Yeah, I, I, brew, I, I brought a drawing on it. That's what it, uh, FRSI is a reusable Nomex felt. So that felt is missing above the bond layer. Hey, over here in the corner. <clears throat> Jim King with the Associated Press. <laughs> Those ground cameras that are the high resolution ground cameras taking pictures of uh, Columbia. To, uh, how do they track this fast moving spaceship uh, with enough resolution to show what shape the tiles are in? Not me. It's probably classified. I don't know. Dan Molina again. Is there any thought that perhaps the uh, uh, that insulation that was giving you the trouble on the external tank a few weeks ago may have had anything to do with the tile problem that's come up now? Not that I'm aware of. Any other questions back up here? At um, 40 minutes MET or somewhere in there, there was reference to a pogo. Can you clear that up once and for all? Uh, I can't because they're, they're still going back and looking at data. And believe me, our data playbacks are stacked up. Like I said, we had a hot fire test earlier today. We hadn't even got to the data yet. Uh, it may have occurred when the main engine's uh, bells were being repositioned. Uh, we're not sure it was really a pogo. The crew felt something. It was after, it, yeah, it seemed like it was even after the Ohms 1 maneuver. And there's some uh, engine positioning going on. Uh, it may have been that. We don't know. I don't know that yet. That's still being looked at. And it's kind of a low priority right now with the other data. Louis Alexander. A different question, Chuck. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't would like a better answer on that one. I, at this time, I don't think we really know. Louis Alexander, Newsweek. And I'd like to ask you about the uh, tests on the door and the door latches. Would you tell us what you accomplished today on those tests? Uh, we accomplished. Everything worked just as we had, it was advertised to work uh, based on pre-flight analysis. Uh, we, there, there wasn't a lot of concern. There was, we ran through a, a series of tests on that first door opening to make sure before we committed to an opening we didn't have any bending or deflections that would get us into trouble once we tried to close the doors again. And everything was nominal. We didn't know if the thermal uh, environment through aspect, uh, ascent might affect it. Uh, of course, when you get on orbit, you've got the zero G relief on the vehicle, uh, but it went just perfectly. Did, did the, uh, you used one set of motors on that and not the other? No, we always use redundant motors. Well, did you run both of them? I understood you would run it on one set of motors one no. day, on the other set the next day. No, we run both motors simultaneously on all door ops. As a matter of fact, we do that to make sure we do have redundant motors. And it went through. We can less. time them. We can time them. If it, if it takes X amount of seconds for the door or a latch gang to open, we know it took two, two motors did that. If it doubles in time, we know we got a motor out. Did you, do you recall how long it took? I don't know. Right up here in the front. Uh, uh, Associated Press, uh, is there any, was there any evidence during your shift of any other missing tiles besides the 15 already discussed? Uh, well, let me clarify the 15. Uh, from what I saw, I saw one tile missing and maybe a half of another. The others appear to be tiles that were damaged but not uh, completely missing. Uh, and on my shift, I, that's all I've, I've uh, seen. Belbin, Aviation Week. Uh, back to the payload bay door test. Could you go through the sequence that... Uh on opening those doors? Uh, <clears throat> let me start by saying first the uh, starboard door closes on, on to the port door. Okay, that's basically the way the doors work. There's a uh, latch, there's forward bulkhead latch groups on forward and aft on each door, four latches in each group. So the starboard door has four forward and four rear latches. 
the center line down to the center have four latch groups, four in each group. And what we did was we started with the starboard door. We opened and closed the bulkhead latches just to make sure the those latches would operate fully. Then we opened and closed the port door latches, uh, bulkhead latches. Now the doors never moved up to this point. Then we went down to the center line and operated those latch groups and closed them. We went back, opened up the forward and aft bulkhead latches on the starboard door, unzipped the center line and opened the starboard door full open. We closed the starboard door. Open the starboard door back up again, unlatch the port door, and open the port door. Quite a series of tests we went through. And I, I think that's basically correct. Okay. Dan Molina again. I understood uh, as you were being introduced that Deal Hutchinson has come back on duty now as opposed to Don Putty. Is there some particular reason for that? No, that's always been the plot. Of... As it, I, I didn't. I, I, it's... The basic reason for that, that's always been the plan. The basic reason for that is Don Putty is the entry flight director. His team does the entry work, and we're getting him phased. We're phasing our teams to support the entry with his team on the third day, or, the, or tomorrow, should we come home early? Any thought of that at this point? Do you, do you think the chances are still pretty good for a 50 Right now, it looks to me like we're going to go to the planned duration. There's no reason that I know of, up to this point, to shorten the duration. Front row up here. Uh, Kimura of Asahi Shimbun. Uh, do you think uh, just uh, taking a photograph uh, from the ground uh, is uh, sufficient or enough uh, to verify the soundness of the spacecraft? I really can't answer that because I'm not knowledgeable in what the capabilities of ground-based <coughs> observations of that type are. Uh, and in fact, I may never see the specific data they use to, uh, that they use for the analysis. I think I saw an IMU alignment. That time period, let's see, Rev, that was Rev 8, mm. referring to. Why on Orbit 8, we had already finished the IMU alignment, the uh, orbit before, minus ZLV, Y axis out of plane, aft and forward in, the, in travel. That's payload bay doors facing the Earth, right? That would be payload bay doors facing the Earth, basically. Tail forward. Tail forward. Nose down. I mean, uh, tail down. Oh, well, it's basically uh, horizontal in the orbit and just following a local vertical track, just tracking uh, that, that fashion. <clears throat> if anybody attempted to view it by any ground observation means, there's no way they could have seen the underside of the ship from, over from Hawaii. That's true. John Kerry, Newsweek. Um, about in the middle of the shift, Young and Crippen said that the major problems were in instrumentation. Was this the data recorder or there, were there other problems as well? We've had a uh, few transducer failures. Uh, We've had to change some of the alert limits and some of the heater operations, thermal limits, and we sort of expected this. Uh, all of our thermal analysis, all of our thermal information is just based on pre-launch analysis. It's tracking good, but we've got hundreds of heaters on the vehicle and thousands of transducers. We've had half a dozen transducers that have failed. We've had uh, a couple of heaters that look like they were begin to cycle in a way that would indicate a possible failure. We turned on redundant heaters. In addition to those, are either switched to a redundant heater. Nothing major, but we've had a few of those. Nits. Back up here. A couple of personal questions. Do we know what they have eaten today? And can we get any information from the medical report that happened during your shift? Crew's feeling fine. I don't get the details of the private med pass. I get the result, basically the results, but I don't go into the details. But the surgeon told me they're doing good, doing real good. 
joking. Uh, the meal, I, don't, I didn't look back to see what the meal was for lunch and dinner tonight. Maybe Terry has that in the... Who they've eaten, specifically what food they've eaten. They've never the said anything about it. They have a selection in their menu to yeah. pick from, and unless they say what they ate, we never know. Wait for the mic, please. There you go. You mentioned uh, medicine. Earlier today, um, I think it was Hutchinson, said that they took medicine for nausea um, because it was planned that they do that. And this evening when I was over there, I got the impression that they did not take any medicine and did not need any medicine, the, which uh, is the case. The surgeon on our team prescribed no medicine for them at the private medcom, nor <clears throat> did they ask for any. So they did, okay. So they did uh, now, Crip planned, and I'm sure has followed his plan to take the scope decks. That was just standard SOP, scope decks, and a motion sickness tablet. Well, it's a combination of that and something else. I forget what the two drugs are. Apolamine and Dexedrine. Yeah. He planned to do that just as a precautionary measure. Scopedex is a compound name. S-C-O-P-D-E-X. Other than that, I know of other, like Terry said, I don't know of any other medication that they've taken. I assume none. Any further questions? Okay, one more up here. Uh, are there any uh, probability of uh, extravehicular activity? Of an EV, uh, extravehicular activity? Not at this time. <clears throat> any more questions? You sure you're all through and run out of questions? You're not going to fog up here with a rump press conference. I'll tell Mr. Kranz and I see him tomorrow that everybody's anxious for him to come back over and talk okay, to one him. more from Pete Bowman here okay could you tell us about the wastewater dump how much was dumped I think we we dumped the wastewater tank to 80 percent earlier today I don't know where it is right they do have the capability of going EVA do they not yes they sir what's uh are there any equipment limitations or do they pretty well equip the way uh any future shuttle flights would be for an EVA. Don't have the. They don't have the mass mem uh, ma the maneuvering unit. We call that AMU, uh, which would allow them to leave the confines of the payload bay and maneuver themselves to other locations of the orbit. That's not on board. That's an article in our in our inventory that we hope to add later. Uh, basically, any EVA we would do this flight, they're tethered within the payload bay, and the tools they have on board, although we have some general purpose tools, were primarily aimed at any payload bay door problems, latches that are jammed. Uh, they have a means if the doors don't close to go out with and, and close the doors, the cable system. The EVA was all planned about payload bay door problems. Anything how would you get back? How would you get down there and get back? Pill down? Not exactly repelling, is it? Uh, there's no oh, free flight. Yeah. There was no plans for a tether like that. I don't know if they ha don't have a tether on board they might use. If you could not get the film of the underside of the space car, right? You do not have enough rope. Tether, whatever, to be able to go. There's no way for him to get down there. There are no handholds. There's no way to maneuver down there to have a look if he did go outside. There's no plans at this time for an EVA. He doesn't have a way to maneuver himself external. In the payload bay, we put in handrails, a guide wire he can use to slide his tether down, and so forth. Barry's trying to say you go outside the vehicle, there's nothing that he can use to uh, move himself around in any particular direction. And all you'd want is some guy out there banging around, you know, on, on the tile. Gouging holes. <laughs> okay, let's shut it down. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. This is Mission Control Houston. Mission elapsed time is 17 hours, 22 minutes. The change of shift briefing has concluded. Uh, slightly less than three and a half hours remaining in the sleep period.
for uh, astronauts Young and Crippen. Uh, downlink data continues to come down from the orbiter to uh, ground stations, uh, indicating that the uh, onboard systems are still performing within nominal tolerances. Cabin temperature inside Columbia is 77 degrees. Humidity is 27% uh, and steady. Mission elapsed time, 17 hours, 22 minutes, 26 seconds. This is Shuttle Mission Control, Houston. This is Mission Control, Houston. Mission elapsed time is now 18 hours, 26 minutes. The uh, orbiter has just uh, crossed the Asian continent on its 13th orbit of, 13th orbit of the Earth, uh, just approaching the Pacific Ocean. Uh, astronauts Young and Crippen remain asleep uh, with uh, slightly less than two and a half hours remaining in the sleep period. Orbiter uh, presently is on the uh, daylight side of the Earth, approaching darkness. Cabin temperature inside Columbia is 76 degrees and steady, and humidity is 28%. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Johnson. Space Center uh, Mission Control, there will be a PAO release announcement in approximately one minute. This is Mission Control, Houston. Mission elapsed time is now uh, 19 hours, 37 minutes. The uh, orbiter Columbia is on revolution number 14, the Mediterranean Sea, just uh, approaching Italy. Just had a uh, pass at the uh, Madrid tracking station, uh, during which time we acquired some uh, real-time data from the vehicle. Uh, astronauts John Young, Robert Crippen, still asleep. Uh, a little over an hour and ten minutes uh, remaining in that sleep period. Uh, data, downlink data from the Columbia indicates that uh, all systems on board are continue to be nominal. Uh, humidity inside the cabin, 27%. Cabin temperature is uh, 76 degrees and steady. Mission elapsed time is 19 hours, 38 minutes. This is Shuttle Control, Houston. This is Mission Control, Houston. Mission elapsed time is now 20 hours, 14 minutes. The uh, crew ha has about uh, 35 minutes remaining in its uh, sleep cycle, but uh, downlink data, which we are presently acquiring over the Arroyo Valley Station, uh, indicates that the uh, crew is awake and uh, has uh, activated the uh, cathode ray tube displays inside Columbia. Uh, we have the capability for acquisition of signal with uh, uh, the astronauts uh, through Arroyo Valley. The uh, flight directors, however, will give the astronauts the option of initiating the uh, air to ground transmission at this point since it is still in their sleep period. We have uh, two and a half minutes remaining uh, in the Arroyo Valley Pass. During the uh, sleep period, the Mission Operations Control Center has been active uh, with uh, Flight Director Neil Hutchison and his crew going over the list of anomalies and uh, preparing to uh, uplink some teleprinted uh, instructions to the crew and uh, changes in the flight plan. The uh, DFI recorder, which has uh, been failed on, uh, will be controlled with uh, circuit breakers and uh, the flight controllers plan to do some further troubleshooting with that system. Astronauts Young and Crippen had remarked that the uh, 
cabin temperature inside Columbia was a little bit too cool. Uh, cabin temperature reading is presently 70, 75 degrees. Um, it is probable that uh, some adjustments in the water flow will be made in an attempt to bring that cabin temperature up to uh, something a little more comfortable for them. Uh, there remains four reaction control jets, four reaction control system jets, which need to be hot fire tested. Uh, these may have been fired uh, previously, uh, but that firing occurred during a period of uh, bad downlink data, uh, which may have clouded uh, the, uh, the the view of that firing. Uh, in any case. Uh, those uh, four reaction control system jets will be fired again, will be hot fired again to uh, verify their performance. Some uh, uplink changes will be uh, made to the flight plan, including a change in the uh, upcoming reaction control system burn, some camera setup time, and some other tasks. Uh, details of the new schedule will be made available at the earliest opportunity. There still remains uh, over 32 minutes uh, in the sleep time. Again, however, data from the vehicle indicates that uh, the crew is, uh, at least one of the crew members is awake. Uh, we have just uh, lost signal uh, passing out of the Arroyo Valley range. Uh, and uh, next acquisition of signal would be in uh, about 26 minutes. So that would uh, be the earliest point in which we would have voice contact with the crew in the event they do uh, choose to initiate contact before the sleep period has expired. Mission elapsed time, now 20 minutes, 20 hours, 18 minutes. This is Mission Control Houston. Bermuda Comtech, Houston Comtech, air to ground one. Disregard Bermuda. Tito Comtech, Houston Comtech, air to ground one. Houston Comtech, Tito Comtech, on air to ground one. Roger, Tito, uh, meet me air to ground two. Roger. Ground two. Okay, you're loud and clear. Uh, stand by for key and check. Roger. Comtech, testing one. Comtech test one, two, two, three, two, one. In the test. Roger, 100% keying, modulation go. Okay, Kito, issues and Comtech. Um, meet me on site cord, Kito. Roger. Control Houston. Ground elapsed time is 20 hours 43 minutes. We're just moments away from contact with the uh, Columbia through the ground station in Quito, Ecuador. And although there's about five minutes remaining in the sleep period, there's a good possibility that the uh, ground control team may uh, send up some. Uh, Something in the nature of soothing wake-up music to the uh, air crew fairly shortly here. The duration of this pass at uh, Aikido is uh, about six and a half minutes, and uh, we do have acquisition of signal at Aikido now, so uh, air-to-ground transmissions may resume shortly. Mission Control Houston data indicates that the crew is up and working, and uh, plans are forthcoming here to uh, transmit some uh, wake-up music. And lift off. She's beautiful. She's clear to plan. Do you copy Houston? This is Houston. She copy. Well, many, many hours went into this thing. A job well done by the shuttle space team. We can't say that she's sleek and lean, but I'll tell you right now, she's a mean machine. The Columbia. Not the kind you smoke. This here's a bird. 
she gets high on herself. Rockwell Martin, USBI, all got together and they give it a try. You ought to see that sucker fly. There she goes, now way bye-bye. Two solid boosters hanging off the side. Look out, boys, you're in for a ride. She's gonna switch into overdrive. Just lay back and let her slide. Don't hit any fence posts on the way up there, boys. Flip them switches. All right. Griffin and Young are in the driver's seat with tons of thrust sitting at their feet. Home sweet home never sounded so sweet. After this ride, they're gonna be beat. Shook their socks off. Best of the rattle her teeth, too. Hold on, boys. All right. Now that we've got them into outer space, there's anticipation on every face. Thousands of eyes looking all around just to see where she's going to touch the ground. Morning, Columbia. Welcome to day two. All right. Morning, Jess. How's the silver team this morning? Well, we're just fine. Had a grand night. Uh, things are looking good. And uh, we have, do have a question. We're wondering, uh, you guys shivering up there? Is the temperature pretty good? Well, it uh, certainly got a little bit chilly last night. was about ready to break out the long undies. If you guys have got a way to warm up the cabin a little bit, we'd probably be interested in hearing about it. Also, for the gap, uh, I don't know if you noticed when we came over the hill there, but uh, apparently since I didn't do my item two before I was through, uh, we didn't get the freeze dried up, so I had it coming down again. Roger, Columbia, uh, stand by a second. Uh, Columbia, Houston, uh, we uh, think we took the recorder away from you, and uh, you'll probably have to do it again. Okay, well, I'm all set up to do that. Uh, we'll just get it after we go all the here. Roger, that would be great. Also, uh, we didn't uh, understand when we uh, messed up that RCS test, uh, and, but if we didn't test all the jets, we probably ought to go back and get them. Uh, might be interested to hear a few words on that. And Columbia, we uh, don't think you messed it up. We just didn't get the data, and we do uh, have a procedure that we will catch that for you. And uh, there are going to be some timeline uh, changes today in the cap. Uh, they don't start the 24 hours uh, MET, so uh, we have a message uh, that's being ginned up that will uh, reflect all those changes for you. And uh, we do have a procedure that we'll get up to you here shortly uh, as soon as I get it for uh, warming the place up. And uh, we don't need an SM checkpoint uh, in the cap at uh, about 21 hours there. Okay. And Columbia, we're uh, 35 seconds from LOS. Uh, we'll see a Bermuda at uh, 20 plus 54, and uh, we'll have that warm-up procedure available then. Okay, looking forward to that. Okay, is the recorder available to me for the dump going over the hill? Come on, we'll catch it. Uh, Columbia, just about to go around the end of the tape, so if you wait a few minutes, uh, you'll have it. Roger that. Mission Control Houston, uh, we will acquire signal again in uh, just under three minutes at Bermuda. The duration of that pass will be two minutes, two minutes, 35 seconds. Mission elapsed time is uh, 20 hours, 52 minutes. This is Mission Control Houston. Columbia, talking to you through Bermuda. We have you for uh, about two minutes. Roger, Houston. Sound yeah, pretty good this morning now. Roger, and uh, it's kind of short pass, so I think we'll uh, keep you cool until we get to Madrid. Uh, 
ECOM is wondering if uh, we didn't have any parameters out of uh, limits, uh, and we did notice you got a fault message uh, prior to Aurora that uh, probably woke you up, and we were wondering uh, what you saw when you uh, checked that out. Down there, it's gone away when we looked it up. Dan, Dan, the, uh, it did not wake us up. But I was using the engine management facility this morning when it went off, and uh, it had something to do with the waste water, I suspect, but when it got up there, it wasn't even a lot of cars. Roger. That's affirmative. We are Columbia, and we're 30 seconds uh, from LOS. We'll see you at Madrid at uh, 2104. Mission Control Houston will have acquisition of signal again in six and a half minutes over the Madrid tracking station. The duration of that pass will be uh, on the order of uh, seven minutes. Uh, the uh, Capcom had uh, asked the crew uh, what was the nature of the alarm, which uh, apparently woke them this morning. Uh, astronaut Bob Crippen uh, responded that the uh, alarm uh, went off uh, when he was uh, using a waste management facility on board the Columbia, and uh, that the alarm, in fact, did not wake them up. But uh, Madrid ComTech, Houston ComTech, air to ground one. Mission time is uh, Maybe ground hours, two. 58 minutes. This is Mission Control, Houston. Houston ComTech, test one, two, three, two, one. How copy? Good contact, Houston contact, air ground one. Good contact, air ground one. Okay, I got the teleprinter uh, tones coming to you. How you copy? Uh, I hear the level here. Okay. Good contact, Houston contact. Somebody one, uh, Houston. Okay. Houston, contact, Madrid, contact, air ground one. Go ahead. Uh, Roger, we measure uh, 20, uh, 60 hertz tone at uh, negative one four at the input of the contact console, negative two two at the input to the uh, DMS. Roger. How about verification receiver out? Uh, we do not have turnaround. Okay. From Madrid, contact, Houston, contact, configure com configuration Lima for this pass. It's Mission Control Houston coming up on the uh, air to ground contact over Madrid. The uh, air crew has been uh, configuring the cabin uh, following the awake period, uh, adjusting window screens, lighting, and activities of that nature following the uh, sleep period. Should have acquisition of signal momentarily. This is Mission Control, Houston. And Columbia, Houston, uh, talking to you through uh, Madrid. We have you for about uh, seven minutes. Okay, lot clear. Roger, and uh, we have a state vector coming your way, and there's also a teleprinter message on its way for, with some photo information. And I have a procedure here to try and get you warmed up. Okay. Uh, what we'd like you to do is go down to the mid-deck uh, MD44F, uh, that's in the floor there, and uh, check the cabin temp control valve in the full heat position. And if it's uh, not in the full heat... I've already done that. It's in full heat. It is. Okay. Well, then we're going to move on to, uh, we'd like to call up spec 88. And then on panel L1, We'd like to check uh, water loop two bypass mode to manual, and then manual increase until water loop two interchanger flow is 700 pounds per hour. 
And what we're doing is bypassing some of the water around the cabin heat exchanger and uh, trying to warm it up for you. That's right, uh, water loop two interchange your flow to 700 pounds per hour. Yeah, it's reading pretty high right now. I'm reading uh, 1,024. Roger. Also, then, I uh, can go ahead and give you the position of the GPC-3 down. Roger, go ahead. Roger, it was recorder one, track 12, that's track one, two in reverse, eight, seven percent. I was done at uh, two zero hours, five, two minutes, four zero seconds. And it looks to me like we're right over order, Dan. Do you agree with that? Uh, that's affirmative. Okay. Say it from here. Roger. And uh, just one more thing, uh, Crip, on that uh, cabin temp. Uh, you can, uh, by adjusting the flow, you can uh, hopefully get the temperature comfortable where you'd like it. Okay. And I do have your CRT timer set up uh, that uh, should be coming up to you about this time. Okay, you got a time for us? Uh, say again your last script. We have a time for the CRT timer. Roger, uh, okay, for RCS-1, it's item 17, plus 22, plus 20, plus zero, zero. For RCS2, it's item 17, plus two, plus 42, plus zero, zero. For RCS3, it's item 17, plus three, plus 42, plus zero, zero. Okay, I copied for a one, it's a two, two, plus two, zero, plus zero, zero. For RCS2, it's 2 plus 4, 2 plus 0, 0. RCS3, it's 3 plus 4, 2 plus 0, 0. And that is correct. Okay, dope. Now we got 708 pounds an hour on the interchanger. Roger, we like it right there, crew. In Columbia, Houston, we're 30 seconds from LOS, so we'll see you at Yargadi uh, at 21 plus 38. This is Mission Control, Houston. Mission elapsed time is 21 hours, 11 and one half minutes. We've had loss of signal over Madrid. The next uh, ground station will be Yargadi, Australia, which we would acquire in uh, about 26 and a half minutes, and that will be uh, um, air-to-ground contact of uh, very close to eight minutes in duration. Uh, during that pass, uh, Columbia Commander John Young uh, rightly observed that uh, the uh, spacecraft was over the road of Spain, which was uh, one of the launch abort contingency landing sites during yesterday's ascent phase. Flight controllers uh, transmitted instructions to the crew on uh, uh, rerouting the uh, flow of uh, water uh, used for heating the, uh, uh, the uh, crew cabin. Uh, and. Uh, it's expected that uh, an improvement in the cabin temperature uh, should occur and uh, be obvious by the uh, time we acquire the signal again over Yargadi. Uh, temperature in the cabin has uh, been fluctuating between 75 and 76 degrees. And uh, we will check that temperature again uh, during next acquisition of signal. Uh, data also indicated that uh, the astronauts had uh, activated the food warmer in the galley, indicating that uh, they're preparing to breakfast. Mission elapsed time is 21 hours, 13 minutes. This is Mission Control, Houston. Uh, Yargadi, correction, overall contact, Houston contact, air to ground one. 
Comtech here, Greg. Uh, stand by one. New York, Eddie Comtech, Houston Comtech. Houston Comtech, York, Eddie Comtech, receiving a five point. Uh, Royal Comtech, Houston Comtech, Air Ground 2. Royal Comtech, Air Ground 2. Stand by for H minus five checks. Yeah, Houston Comtech, Royal Comtech, we've got a very bad echo. Project copy, bad echo on this circuit. That's affirmative, and we had it on air ground one as well. Stand by one. Four Comtech, Houston Comtech, air ground two. Houston Comtech, Royal Comtech, air ground two, you let them clear now, echo. Okay. Stand by. Roger. Houston Comtech, testing. This is Mission Control Houston. Mission elapsed time is 21 hours, 37 minutes. Neil Hutchison and this team of flight controllers was the ascent team during the uh, launch of Columbia. And accordingly, these, uh, this group of men were not able to uh, visually watch the launch during this loss of signal period. Uh, they have been playing back the videotape of the uh, of the launch phase. So, incredibly, it is only uh, only just now that these uh, men in here are uh, enjoying the sense of uh, the visual sense of awe that much of the nation in the world saw 21 and a half hours ago. Uh, we are just moments away from acquiring signal at Yargadi, Australia. This is Mission Control Houston. Hello, Columbia, talking to you through uh, Yagerty. We have you for seven and a half minutes. Lab clear there, uh, Houston. Roger, and I have the pad for your RCS uh, test sequence number one on 2-42 uh, of your cap. Roger, uh, on the burn attitude, roll, 179er, pitch, 164, yaw, 320, the targets, HA are 145, HP is plus 144, delta V total is 0.001.8, T go is 3 seconds, down in the notes, it's a uh, plus X trans. Check that box. Uh, going over to uh, item 21 is 207600. Item 27 TIG is 000 slash 2220000.0. Item 36, negative 00. <coughs> 01.8 37 plus all zips 38 is all zips and the post burn attitude is uh, NA Okay, to rebrack is as follows burn attitude is 179 1.64320 145.144 1.8 Three seconds, two zero seven six zero 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 eight. Twenty-two hours, twenty minutes, no seconds. Plus one, minus one point eight. All zips, all zips. Post burn attitude not applicable, and it's a plus X translation. Roger, and interconnect. Uh, the note is the interconnect uh, to RCS from the left ohm. Okay, we're in that configuration right now. Roger. Roger, we're ready to copy. Okay, well, as you can see, I've got the fuel cell purge going right now. When I was doing the heater reconfig, I discovered down on ML86 Bravo that uh, we had both water line heaters, uh, circuit breakers closed. So I have opened A, and we're running on Bravo only. I don't know whether we want to consider opening, uh, changing those around to verify that Alpha is working later. Roger, we copy. 
and Columbia Houston, uh, can we get an alignment report? We copy. That was IMUs one, two, and three, respectively. Roger. X, Y, and Z, respectively. And Columbia Houston, uh, you broke up a little bit. We uh, copied the time, but uh, and then something 200, but we missed what was in between. Yes, we did. Small uh, angle difference. And Columbia, uh, we're not reading you. Uh, we'll catch uh, the rest of this at uh, Roro in uh, about three minutes. It's Mission Control Houston. We. Nominally, should still have about a minute left of acquisition of signal with uh, the Argety station, but uh, as you could tell, the uh, communications were breaking up pretty badly toward the end, so we'll resume that discussion at the Arroyo station in uh, just about a minute. That uh, pass at Arroyo will be uh, just under six minutes in duration. Uh, during that pass, uh, the crew reported that they were proceeding with the uh, fuel cell purge uh, and read back data on the uh, alignment of the inertial measurement unit. Uh, the uh, Capcom had uh, called up figures to the crew uh, for their next uh, reaction control system burn. Should they resume contact momentarily through Arroyo Valley? This is Mission Control Houston. Hello, Columbia. We're talking to you through a roll. We have you for five and a half minutes. Okay, panel. Roger, and our question on that, uh, we copied the torquing angles and we copied the execution time. However, after the execution time, there was some something that came through garbled uh, followed by 200, and uh, that's where our question lies. Uh, John just said that uh, they uh, had very small star angle difference, and uh, consequently we thought it was a good, good angle. Roger, we copy that, thank you. And Columbia Houston, for your uh, water supply dump uh, numbers uh, for Alpha and Bravo, there will be no dump uh, this time. Roger. And your 30 seconds uh, to LOS, we'll see you at uh, Mila at 22 plus 23. All right. Mission Control Houston, mission elapsed time, 21 hours, 52 minutes, we had a loss of signal at Yargity. Uh, next acquisition of signal will be in about 30 minutes from now. That uh, last exchange between uh, Columbia Commander John Young and Capcom, Dan Brandon's team. The, uh, uh, mitigating actions taken to uh, warm the Columbia's cabin have apparently been uh, ineffectual to this point. The uh, cabin temperature remains 76 degrees and stable. Uh, it is possible that the, uh, the uh, increase in temperature, if there is indeed an increase, uh, may be uh, slow in coming. We may have more uh, data on that during the next acquisition of signal. This is Mission Control Houston. Malacom, take Houston, Comtech, air ground one, air ground two, how do you copy? 
Jason Comtech, Wild Comtech, I have you loud and clear. You're loud and clear. Thank you. Hello, Columbia, talking to you through uh, the states. So we have you for 10 minutes. Okay, and we have a problem with the uh, rec pressure on uh, system 102. It's uh, going up, and we can't seem to stop it. Roger, we copy. Roger, we copy. Hello, you still there? Roger, uh, we're still there, and uh, we're uh, trying to sort out this rig pressure for you. Okay, we appreciate that. And we're maneuvering to the gravity gradient uh, attitude here. Roger, Columbia, and we have you for five minutes and 40 more seconds. Control valve on system one right now. That should drop her down at least. Uh, Columbia, we we don't. Okay, never mind. That, that's not the right thing to do. Columbia, we uh, think possibly a, a check valve uh, is leaking here, but we're going to continue to look at it, and uh, we have uh, no concern with that pressure going up. Uh, you can't damage anything, so we'll just uh, keep uh, working on it. Okay. Uh, you think my current configuration is okay? Uh, that's affirmative. And we think that pressure could go up as high as the N2 reg uh, pressure. As the uh, N2 reg pressure up to 200? Uh, it's at 214. 214. In Columbia, Houston, uh, we're 30 seconds uh, from LOS. We'll see you at Madrid at uh, 22 plus 38. 22, 38, okay.